Recording in progress. Good afternoon. Welcome to Hope Church. Glad you guys could join us, whether in, online or in person. Why don't we rise? Uh, we'll go through the Apostles' Creed together, and we'll jump into worship. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this house, and we thank you for what you're doing all around the world. We worship you today, Jesus, and we say you are worthy of our praise. So be loved well in this, in this room in Clarksville, Maryland, and all around the world. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Strength. You are faithful, 
Jesus reigns in this place Showers of mercy and grace They are falling on every face There is freedom I'm okay. It's too much stuff on my face. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's pray, Hope Church. Uh, on, on the eve of our Independence Day, where we come together to pray for our nation, um, it seems every day in the news there's something that strives to, to divide us, to separate us, keep us arguing with each other, and we just pray, Lord, that um, you help us to find unity. Um, you help us to come together in unity 
and form a community. Yes, uh, and we pray that. Sorry, uh, we pray that you can help us be uh, instruments of your word. That um, that. That our nation can be unified under you once again, as it was founded under you, if we can bring it back. Um, yeah, we pray for the, the perseverance and the boldness to uh, unify America under Jesus once again. So pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you guys could stay standing and greet the people next to you, around you, say hi. We have some familiar faces in the building. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Hope Church again. It's good to see a lot of faces here, a lot of faces we haven't seen in a while. Uh, let's jump into it. So this month, eat. it is a new month, um, so we are going to have a new business in our area that we're going to be focusing on. Uh, this month's EAT stands for Evangelism Around Town. is Koki Tea, which is right around the corner. Uh, they sell bubble tea. So be sure to drop by, say hello. Um, they know that this is their month, and so um, they'll know if we're, we're coming in to bless them from Hope Church. Uh, we have some verbal announcements without any slides, so I'm just going to go ahead and read them off and make sure that we're on the same page. Um, so for now, we are not going to be serving any refreshments after worship until we see a decline of COVID cases, but it looks like the numbers are getting better. Um, so praise God for that. Uh, and while not mandatory, we do encourage for you guys to have masks if you guys are more comfortable that way. Um, the other verbal announcement is that Pastor Mimi is out of town. She's on vacation from... This week? July? I'm sorry, the last week. Until this Tuesday? The dates are wrong. So she is out of town until this Tuesday. I have the wrong dates on here, but yeah, she is out of town. Um, and yeah, with that, we will continue our worship with tithes and offerings. Uh, we are um, making it available for you guys to give physically here. Uh, we do have the Church Center app, and you can also mail the check. So yeah, we'll go into a time of giving. So children and others who want to bring up their tithes and offerings, feel free to do that. Anyone else? Last call? All right. Cool. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We love your house. We love being a doorkeeper at your house. And we say better a day in your course than a thousand elsewhere. So we love you. We honor you in this house. We say you're worthy, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Children, you may be dismissed. Have fun. Am I on? Okay. Always forget to put mask on. And by the time when I'm reminded, it's already in the church talking to people. So I'll be here. Okay. Just to let you know, I have a mask on. Mask in me, on me, somewhere. Okay. God is good. Pastor Mimi just awake this a lot this Sunday, but uh, it's like some, so, so much is missing. Yep, right? Okay. All right. Uh, let's all stand for the reading of the word. Uh, the word of God comes this month. Uh, today's scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 7, verse 18 through 35. A little long, but we are reading from ESP. If you want to follow along in your own Bible, you can do so. Otherwise, we have the 
uh, were on the screen. The disciples of John reported all these things to him, and John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, uh, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the man had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour, he, had, he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many who were blind, he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowd concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When all the people heard this, and the tax collectors too, they declared God just, having been baptized with baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. To what then shall I compare the people of this generation, and what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not weep. John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine. You say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look at him, a glutton and a, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her children. The word of the Lord. All God's people say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let me pray once. Father, we just come right now in the mighty, beautiful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you said if two or three gather in your name, you will be in our midst. We ask for your presence here. We worship, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we want to hear more than a good message. We want to see you. We want to be with you. We want to know your heart, know your ways, God. Come and meet with us here. But I ask you to even guide me. The words may be clear and concise and filled with your grace. So come, Lord. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. If, let me make a little comment before I begin. Yes, and, and this is not in my notes, okay? This is extra thing. As I look at the Word of God, as I begin to prepare the messages, often I look at the Word of God, the text, and sometimes my heart jumps at certain themes. So easy for me to run after things I like to, like to really run after. And often one of the difficulties I have is I need to rein my, my feelings and my desires so that I can really be faithful to what God is saying. This is one of those places. I could, I, I, as I prepare the word of God, I could see 10,000, maybe not, not, that's too much, maybe four, five, six different sermons I could preach. But I want to be faithful to the word and really say what God is saying. Today we come to Jesus' word on a remarkable man. Man, this man, Jesus says, greatest among all prophets. And he's the greatest person born from a woman, he says. Of course, not including Jesus. Remarkable man, John the Baptist. I like to call it John the Baptizer. Somehow when you say John the Baptist, we think he's a Baptist. He's not a Baptist. There was no Baptist church those days. Baptizer. Anyhow, 
In Matthew's account, the same account is mentioned in Gospel Matthew that he was in prison. This is very important information to think to remember. He was in prison. It says, you know, and while he was in prison, he heard the works of Jesus. He sent word to his disciples, word by his disciples to Jesus. And he asked a very strange question that's to come from him. Now, before I go on, let me describe a little bit about this John the baptizer or the Baptist, of what the Bible mentions. And he, I don't know if you knew, John was, John the baptizer was a cousin of Jesus. This is a distant cousin, but still a cousin. Probably, probably about six months older than him. And, and so, you know, I could actually imagine in an in a older cousin beating up younger cousin, top of the earth. And I don't know if that's, and John being, he was a man's man. He was, from the birth, he was called by God, and he grew up, you know, in a, uh, as a Nazareth from the beginning. And he shows up in the scene in the Bible, preaching in the wilderness. Not in the city, but in the wilderness. He's wearing camel's garment, eating wild locusts, grasshoppers. Have you ever tasted a grasshopper? It tastes good. I mean, when you roast it, it tastes really yummy. Anyway, this is off the... And, you, and he was, it was eating honey. He's out there in the wilderness, screaming and preaching. His message was repent. And, 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 and bear the fruit of your repentance. He was, he was a bold man. He was crying. And, you know, Bible actually says he probably only ministered about one year before he was put, in, put into prison. But in one year, whole Israel heard about this man. And they, they, they people thronged. They came to him, hearing, seeing him as a prophet of God. And, you know, and he was bold enough to criticize the king at the time, Herod the Great. They call him great, Herod. And he criticized him for marrying his sister-in-law, ex-sister-in-law, Herodias. And at the end, he stood faith, faithful to God. He was beheaded by the king Herod. That's John. Just a few more things about John. And I want you to know, John was, had a wonderful testimony about Jesus. He said to Jesus, it's about Jesus. He's the Lamb of God who takes away, the, who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter one. He and he said about Jesus, "I baptize you with water, but he will he he is the one who will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire." And and, and he he declared he's the Son of God. And this I love. He said, "He must increase, but I must decrease." Humble man. Even though Jesus was you know following his footsteps in ministry. And actually, and Jesus, he had great, uh, great people coming, and he told them to go to Jesus. That was John. But this John, this humble man, this John, and a strong, mighty prophet of God, he, he's, he comes, he sends his two of his disciples to Jesus, ask the question. You know, you have to understand, this is, he's a puzzle. He should be the last who ever asked this kind of question. He asks, are you the one? Who come? Or should he look for somebody else? John has been, he, he came to prepare the way for the Messiah, Jesus. And he says, now, are you the one? If you're old enough, when you say, are you the one, you're thinking about a movie. Matrix, right? He is the one. Are easy to exp- you, know, you know what? Come on. How many of you saw Matrix? Come on. Best movie, one of the best movies ever. Right, the expected one, I, I say here, of course, we are not talking about matrix here. And John sends his disciples saying, are you the one? Are you the expected one? Or should you look for somebody else? And think about he was in prison. Something is going on here. Something is going on here. And, 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 and um, let me say something. This is important. Sometimes the question someone is asking reveals more about the one who is asking than the one who is being asked. Often the questions I'm asking to somebody actually reveals more about me. It reveals sometimes your motivation, your assumption. It reveals your worries, anxieties, your fears. And often that, it is projected in my question to the person who is asking. 
You know, and, and I could see John hearing about what Jesus did. You know, you know, the story begins by saying, John has heard what happened, what Jesus is doing. Right before that, Jesus raised the dead, healed, a, you know, healed that, uh, that centurion's servant by just speaking. He's healing and doing all, preaching and all that. And after hearing all that in the prison, John says, are you the one? He's saying, I can't understand what you're doing. I'm confused. It don't make sense to me. And, I, and, and that's what he's saying. John was saying to Jesus, I don't understand. I, I, I'm confused. It doesn't make sense. He was disappointed. You can see disappointment here. He was disillusioned, discouraged. Maybe he was, you know, all those D words, three, three D words, disappointed. You know, and, and, and so the question I was at, I think, thought about is, instead I want to ask him, what are you expecting? I bet you I could see John saying, I thought he would. I, I expected to do this, him to do this, right? You know, this is what he's saying. I thought you would do something, but you are, you are not doing what I thought you would do. You are not being what I thought you were going to be. That's what he's saying. And he has doubts. He's not only in, in, the, in the prison, but he's in the prison of his doubts and confusion and disappointment and, and discouragement. Even a, you know, think about it. Even a great prophet who had great revelation of Jesus Christ, who had great understanding probably more than anybody else, even he didn't understand. He had moments of doubts. He had moments of discouragement. You see that in the Bible all the time. You see that with Eli, Prophet Elijah after the great battle. You know, killing all, you know, they, you know, de destroying all the false prophets. He runs away saying, God, I want to die. I'm good enough. And he wants to die. You know, Abraham couldn't wait for God's timing and his ways. He, he gets anxious and he, has a, he has a, takes his wife's maid and has a Ishmael and Many, many leaders, even in the men of God and people of God in the Bible, you find they have moments of discouragement. I want you to see what Jesus does. In verse 21, it says, In that hour, he healed many people of diseases, plagues, and evil spirits. And on, on many who were blind, he bestowed, so bestowed sight. And Jesus tells Two of his John disciples went, says, go and tell John what you, have, what you see, what you have heard. Blind receives a sight. The lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up. And the poor have God's good news preached to them. You, you know, Jesus is not just men mentioning what he's doing. He, he's doing something here. Something else he's doing here. He is quoting the Old Testament prophecy. He's quoting the Old Testament prophecies, what Messiah will be doing. He's saying, you see what you do, what, what I do? And go ahead, tell him this was happening because I am doing what God prophesied the Messiah will do. Because in Isaiah 35, it says, Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped, and the lame will leap like a deer, and the tongue of a mute will shout for joy. And he's saying, when Messiah comes, this is what he'll do. He will open the, open the ears you know, and the, let them speak and all that. And he's saying, I am fulfilling what God said the Messiah will do. And he's also quoting Isaiah 61, which said, Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? To bring good news to the poor. That's what he said I'm doing. That's, just, well, that's what I'm doing, he says. Go tell John what, what, what you see, what you heard. I am actually doing what God said the Messiah will do. He's saying, I am the Messiah. You see, what John didn't know was, I, I don't know if you remember about four months ago when you were studying the Luke chapter 4 when Jesus began his ministry, when you the synagogues and read Luke chapter 4, Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because you know not me. And he, he ends at to proclaim the favorably of the Lord. I remember mentioning, I remember I even actually say, Oh, I didn't know Jesus didn't finish the prophetic words. The prophetic words should have been 
to proclaim the favorability of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Jesus stops at favorability of the Lord. Doesn't mention the, the vengeance of our God, day of vengeance of our God, because that portion, the that portion, prophetic word be fulfilled way down the line when Jesus Christ comes back. He came to fulfill that prophetic word, God's promise. And some portion will be fulfilled way down the line. Even great prophet John, who came to prepare way for the Lord Jesus, didn't fully understand God's purpose and will. Because of that, he had questions. Because he got discouraged. Because that he was disillusioned. Because of that, he was wearied, tired. And he's in prison. God, Jesus, why aren't you doing what you're supposed to do? Because John said, he will come and baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And fire means judgment. He, he's, he's judging. Why aren't you judging the people? He, and I, so, the, the, here's a verse. In, and then, then Jesus says something. Very interesting uh, word he speaks in verse uh, 23. Let me read that. The blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Offended by me. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. I don't know whether John was offended, but he was just surely discouraged. He has some doubts. Surely he said, I don't understand. But I don't know whether he was offended or not. I don't think he was. But Sometimes our discouragement, our doubts can go in to lead us into being offended and even stray away. But that verse, the word that offended is translated in different ways in different translations. It can also mean blessed is, any, is anyone who does not stumble on account of me, NIV. God will bless everyone who doesn't reject me because of what I do. Sometimes we, are, we get discouraged, but now we end up rejecting Christ, stumbling over, and end up being offended. We live, in, we live in a very offended generation, right? We get offended by everything. Everything. Every little thing. You know, and the thing is, the question is, are you offended by Jesus? Are you offended by what Jesus says? A lot of people are offended by what Jesus said. When Jesus, the one of the things that people are most offended by is when Jesus said, I'm the only way. I'm the way, truth, and life. No one comes to Father except through me. There's only, no other way but except me. People are offended by that and say, you are, what about Mus, Mus, Muslims? What about Hindus? What are you saying? There's no, no other way? Jesus says, I'm the only way to the Father. That's offensive to people. Some people are offended by what, you, what Jesus says about Certain activities, you know, what, what, what he calls certain things, sins. If people are offended by those things. People are offended by many things about what Jesus said and who he is. Sometimes it's because of our ignorance. Sometimes because he's presented in the wrong way. But we get offended many different ways. We do. And sometimes, you know, God, I love you. I did everything. I followed you. I prayed. And why did you let my blank? My son died. My father died. My daughter died. You know what I mean. We get offended. We get offended. In this part of eternity, yes, Jesus is a resurrection life. We have a, we get, we get a taste of his, his kingdom coming because his kingdom began to come. We taste healing and resurrection here, but not everybody will be healed. Not everybody will be resurrected here. When Christ returns to the other side of eternity, when he returns, there will be full resurrection. Everybody will be, everybody will be healed. There will be no sickness, no death. Until then, there will be sickness here. There will be death here. You see, and sometimes if we put our hope in material and earthly blessings here, and we see that as the only way of proof of God's love for me, that you will be offended. You will be offended. God, why aren't you not helping me? Why didn't you stop this? God doesn't always explain to us, but he's tell, he's, he lets John know. He doesn't, he doesn't rebuke him. This is what I came to do. This is who I am. I came to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, gospel is preached. And he declared, this is who I am. Blessed are you if, who are those who are not offended by me. 
I don't think John was offended by him. I believe he ended up giving his life and dying for God. Cause anyhow. Think about that. We get offended. And so here, the thing is, when you, when you get offended, when you, when you feel offended, when you have doubts come, I'll quote somebody who, I, I love the way this person put it. When, when, when the doubts come, never, never treat your doubts as certainty. Always doubt your doubts. Never let your doubts have the last word. If they are true doubts, then seek answers on which to stand and find evidence. Follow the evidence to the truth and build your certainty with the truth. That's the life that God blesses. Sometimes we have little doubts come. We let it ruin our lives. Sometimes we are a little bit, you know, uh, you know really offended or not. We stay in the place and we end up stumbling over and walking away. I seen, uh, one of the things I prayed over the years, many years, is that I, will, I pray for campus so often saying, campus, the college campus will not be a place where many people who lose their faith will be a youth. Where the, you know, people go to college and they're under, a lot of them lose their faith. They get challenges, they get asked questions, they lose their faith. My prayer is that no, rather than that, you will actually find God, find evidences in God. I've been following Christ for 42 years. I studied philosophy. I realized that he is a truth and way and, way and life. There is no other way. As I consider the truth more and more, I am more convinced that he is always right. He is, has never failed. He makes perfect sense to me in every way. I still I need to learn a lot more things, but he has proven to me he is the way, truth, and life. Let me go back. I don't know where, where I am. I was excited. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, now, and then, and then Jesus goes on, and, and look at verse, uh, uh, verse 24, and after the, those two, two, the messengers go back, Jesus began to ask the people. Jesus began to command, command, and, and really uh, uh, talk good things about John the baptizer. He doesn't rebuke John about his doubts. Just instead, he commends him. And he says he's more than a prophet. He's a, he's a messenger for Messiah. He says he's the one great, greatest one born of woman. Right? And so let, let's look at this. Verse 24. When messengers of uh, John's messengers had gone. Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out to, into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? Of course not. And when, when people ran out to see John, they didn't go out to see a man who is swayed by every dark, everything out there. He, he went to see a man who is steady, steady like a rock, who is sturdy, who was strong. And what then did you go out to see? A man dressed in of soft clothing, behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are king's court. John was not like that. He was not wearing any nice clothes. He was not in luxury. He was actually took to the place to be in the wilderness. And he actually you know, wore the camel's hair, you know, eating grasshoppers and locusts and things. This is man's man. He was, out. he was not looking for easy things in life. That was not what they go out and look for. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes. I tell you more than a prophet. Yes. You, you went out to see him because you're the prophet. Jesus said, yet I want to tell you he's more than a prophet. Jesus said, this is the poem he's written. He's not only a prophet who talks about coming Messiah, but he is the one. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before who will, who will prepare your way before you. He says, He's not only a prophet who will talk about the Messiah coming, he's the one who will usher in the coming of the Messiah. He's the one who will prepare the way for the Messiah to come. He got to see the Messiah coming. He got to declare there's a Messiah. He's quoting Malachi, Malachi chapter 3. And, and he, Jesus goes on to say, I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Now, now you have to stop and think about this. Greater than King David? Greater than Moses? Greater than Prophet Elijah? Elisha? Greater than Abraham? Think about it. Jesus is saying he's greater one among born of women. But he has not done a single, single 
miracle. He has not even wrote any book. He has not written any prophetic words out. All he did was declare to repent and get the people get ready for the Messiah Jesus. But Jesus said he is the greatest of them all. How is that? Think about it, because every prophet that came, every messenger that God came, they're talking about Messiah's coming, God's promise is coming. They all pointed to it, but he's the one who was actually was able to not only point, he was actually be there to see him begin his ministry. He was the one who finally opened the door for the Messiah to begin his ministry. In that way, he was greater than everyone else. This is what Jesus said John the baptizer was. But yet that man, even he had a moments of doubt. His moment of, you know, questioning and disappointment and discouragement. Now look at the next slide. This is so amazing. But yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, is greater than him. If John is the greatest among the born of woman, but the least one in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Does it make sense? He's not, he's not making a little of John. He's just saying, you know, John was you know, really looking into God's promise of Messiah coming, but those who are in the kingdom of God already, they have already have tasted things they're all looking toward. How much more they are. Do you know that all over you here, here who know and trust in Christ Jesus, you are greater than the greatest man born of a woman. You are in the kingdom of God. You are a child of God. You are a, a, a person belonging to God. You get to taste the God's grace. You get that holy God living in you. That's the gospel they're talking about. And, and the thing that really just convicted me was, if that's the case, but why is there so many children of God, so many people of God's kingdom live like nobodies, think they are nobodies, and they live like beggars all the time. We do not know who we are, what God has done for us. We do not know what God is, how God has blessed us. We do not know what God is doing in us. We do not know. We do not know how to appreciate. We do not know how to live that out. It's like a millionaire, you know, like a millionaire, you know, live, driving a tiny little, you know, taking bus everywhere, you know, taking bus. I mean, that's okay to take bus. But you take bus everywhere, a living as if I am nothing. Why is that the case? Why is that the case? Okay. Okay. Wow. Am I talking too fast here? Thank you, Philip. Good. That reminded me when I when I was a young preacher, well, beginning, beginning beginning my ministry in seminary days, I thought I had to preach whole Bible every Sunday. Every Sunday. When our youth group was done, all the lunch was done. I preached about an hour and a half every Sunday. My youth group hated me. And so, by the way, like, so I remember one of my guys, our youth group president, he now is a pastor, and he said, Preach on, brother. Everybody said, Shut up. Do not encourage him. I thought I had to preach the whole Bible every time. Anyhow, I don't have to preach the whole Bible here. But listen carefully. Do we get offended? Think about it. We do. God, why don't you do this for me? Why? And we have this ideas, expectation, unwarranted, unbiblical expectations and things because we do not know who God is, who, how much he loves us. We struggle with complaining rather than giving thanks. Of, of who God is, what he has done. Jesus, and we forget to really behold who he is, know who he is. Doesn't mean we'll, know, we'll understand everything. A couple of weeks ago in my morning prayer, I was going to Psalm uh, 23. I was really reminded. You know, the Psalm 23 is amazing. Some you know that. You know, I, I, I love praying through Psalm 23. It begins by, saying, begins by saying, Lord is my shepherd. I shall neck nothing. He leads me to green pastures, makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside the uh, quiet waters, stream, or streams of living water. 
He guides me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, he restores my soul. The second portion goes, though even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. It didn't say God will take that, the, the shadow of death away. No, he said you, when you walk through the shadow of valley of death, you're going to walk through some of that. He said, I will not fear because he is with me. He will ride in your step. He'll come for me. He said, his promise is, I'm going to walk with you, not take those things away from you. I'm going to walk with you side by side. You are going to go through some valleys. You are going to go through some you know, shadow of death. Next line he says, you, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. There are enemies there who wants to hurt you, but he, God didn't say, I'm going to take your enemies away. No, he put up your enemies. He said, I will prepare a table before them. I'm going to, I'm going to honor you before them. I'm going to anoint you with more. I'm going to, I'm going to anoint you. I'm going to set you apart. And you know, and the, love that. Mind it. We have this wrong expectations and ideas of who God is supposed to be. And we end up getting offended by God because he doesn't meet my expectations. And you know, and come and behold how good he is. And, and I love what Jesus says. Now I'm going to end, end, wrap up the message in the next section. People respond to what Jesus says about John. And they say in... Um, Verse 29, when all the people heard this, and the text collectors too, they declared God just, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. People respond to John in ministry in two ways, receivers or rejectors. All people, including text collectors, a lot of common people, they got, they accepted what, Paul, what John the baptizer taught and preached, and they got baptized by him. And so he said, they honored God. They declared through their actions that God is just. But there were Pharisees and scribes, or the spiritual leaders and the theologians who rejected not only John, but also rejected God's purpose for their lives. And they said, you know, I'm too good to be baptized by you. I don't need to, be, I don't need to repent. So there are two, receivers and reject, rejectors. And Jesus really tells them a rhetorical question. He says and to the people, to what, to, to, to what then shall I compare the people of this generation and what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace calling to one another. We play the flute for you but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not weep. John the Baptist came eating, and eating no bread and drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. Son of man has come eating and drinking. You say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by their children, meaning the wisdom is justified by their actions. Well, how, what you do, your, your actions. And, and the people who will never be pleased by anything. When John the Baptist came and declared the repentance and told people to repent, and he came in fasting and all that, and they said, he's, he has demon, he's weird, he's weird. But when Jesus Christ came loving the people and being with the people, caring for the sick and hurting, oh, he is a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Look at him. He's a glutton and a drinker. Drunk, I don't think he was, a, he was a drunkard, but they called him in that way. And they will not receive him at all. Rejectors and receivers. Rejectors and receivers. Let me ask you. See, in, for me, the reason John the baptizer was the greatest man was, he, he, he knew his calling in his life. He was all about Christ. He was pointing his life his life to Christ. He exalted him. And in, in, in that, he was the greatest witness of all. Declared who Christ, who Christ was. Amazing man. He is inviting us today. Inviting us today. The question is, are you the, are you the, are you the one? Is Jesus Christ, 
expected on Messiah that you are trusting in? Is he the one that Bible talks about to you? Is he the Lord and Savior? He came to seek and save the lost. And will you trust in him for who he is? Will you come and look to him and, and, and let down your own preconceived ideas, what your expectations, but hold on to him as who he is? The way the God, word of God declares to us who he is. God will so love the world. Let me stop here for a second. You know, I went to a Princeton Seminary. It's good and bad. When I went to Princeton Seminary, um, and the name Princeton carries a little bit of, you know, I guess, a little bit of name value, but when I went to Princeton, you know, it was, a, it was still a liberal seminary, but we had a mixture of conservative students and conservative uh, professors as well as very liberal students and, and faculty. We had always had a fights going on. I had a professor, we had professors who taught the Bible for 40 years, but not one other Christian. We had professors who didn't believe Jesus resurrected. And I was studying in those kind of places. I remember, I, I remember uh, what, in a, every, in a, every year, Princeton and uh, Westminster Seminary students will have a fellowship together because you know, we are two, two extremes, liberal school and conservative school. Now, I'm, my wife is smiling. She remembers. So we would, have, we would have this fellowship together once a semester. I remember one year, one semester, that Westminster students came up to our school. We were having some sports in the morning. I had to play basketball. I don't know whether we won or not. I think we won. And, and, but anyway, it's all short Korean people playing basketball, okay? Anyway, my, our team was called under, under 5'11". We, we don't have anybody over 5'11". So we were just, anyway. So I remember we, after, after the morning thing, we were having lunch. We were trying to have a time to share. And we went on asking. Everybody said, telling what your favorite hobby or interest is. And one of the Westminster students smiled and looked at us and said, you looked at us, prison students, I love to read the Bible. The other guy say, I love to pray. Hint, hint, hint right? He's winking, right? And, 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 and in a, I don't know, I got offended. Because he was saying, you know, you guys don't pray. You guys don't read the Bible. You guys don't believe in those things. That's what he was getting at. We, we, we are conservative. We believe in those things. We believe in the Bible. You guys are not. And so, I don't know what that's what it meant, but I took it that way. I got offended. You know what I mean? I get offended. This guy, is, he thinks he's better than me. He thinks holier than me. He had never asked who I was, what I believe. And what happens often is easier to categorize people a certain way. Easier to label people a certain way. But never hear them out. Not everybody at Princeton was liberal. I was not liberal. I bet you I was more conservative than any one of them put together. I believe in seven-day creation. Most people have struggled with that. I don't. And anyway, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just talking about being offended. It's easy to be offended. And often, and, and often we do not hear what is truth. You know, and, and so it happens in our lives as well. And, and, and we get offended in many different ways. That, was, that story was a little bit off. But anyway, I don't know why I, don't know why I told you that story. But uh, and I, I remember, since I'm saying this, I'll, I'll say it again. Say this. When I came to when I came to Maryland about 33 years ago uh, to, to start my ministry here, when I came down, people looked at me. Why did you go to devil school? They called Princeton devil school. Why you go to devil school? And some people were you know, always making sure that I was conservative enough, and whether I was saying, I, I, not say anything. And the thing is, often they never got to talk to me about what I believe. It's an assumed thing. It's, it can happen easily. Can happen even in our lives. We, we get offended by different ways. But often, we do not get to hear the truth. And, and so let me, I'm, let me put this back. Uh, uh, John, in his difficult time in prison, even though he was a great man of God, loved the Lord, and he believed in who Christ was, he had a moments of doubt, doubt, moments of discouragement. You know, you know what he did was he did come and ask Jesus. He came to ask him straight, Jesus, are you the one? In, in, and he was able to come and ask. And he was asking. And Jesus did rebuke him. Jesus commended him for that. And let him know who he is. I want you to trust in the Lord Jesus. Come draw near. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are. Are you ready? Praise him. I don't know where you are. 
I want you to hear our Lord Jesus. Let me put the last verse up there. I don't know if you noticed, uh, I, I've been ending the message with John 3, 16 every Sunday and highlighting some certain portion of it. It says, for God so loved the world. Yes, the little ones too. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. So today's focus is so that whosoever believes in him, who does not stumble over him, who does not get offended by who he is, who does not reject who he is because of what he does, shall not perish but have everlasting life. Those who trust in him, believe in him, who he is. Our God who loves us. His way is the best way, perfect way. There is no other way. Amen? Let's all stand. I want you to hear, I want you to hear what God says this, this afternoon. He loves you. He delights in you. You may have some doubts. You may have some discouragement. You may be discouraged a little bit. Disillusioned, maybe. I want you to hear what Christ says. I love you. I have purpose and plan for you. I am the one the Father sent. He is the Messiah, the only way. He delights in you. He loves you. He calls you. He invites you to come and trust in him. For who he is, and hope and life that is in him. He is a give up life. I want to encourage you today to trust in him. Draw near. When your questions ask, just draw near and ask him. He will reveal his way to you. Father, we love you, we honor you, we give you glory. We are yours, God. We thank you, God, that you gave your one and only Son for our sake. Your way is the best way. There's no other way but through Jesus Christ. We thank you for your grace, God. We come and say we love you. We honor you, our Savior, our God. We honor you, God. Come, even now. I ask God that uh, you will be honored in our midst. Oh, that we want to know your way more and more each day. Your grace overflowing us, God. We love you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's worship God through a praise.
in your mercy. You have loved us with everlasting love. You have shown us your path, God. You lead us into your righteousness. For your name's sake, we love you. We honor you. Help us, God. Find hope and joy that is in you. Rest in you, God. Trust in you. Blessed are those who do not, who do not stumble, who are not offended by me. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God the Father and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God be upon all those who are gathered here looking unto him who is our Lord, our God. Be upon hope, church, from now until forever and ever. Amen.